Hey everyone, it's Broccoli Boy, and I just wanted to make a video today um, tanking Genesis as my dex build. Uh, we'll have included the spec and all the gear at the end of the video, um, but for now, I just wanted to show some gameplay and maybe uh, make a few notes here and there, things to watch out for. Um, overall, the spec is mostly just used for PvP. Uh, as you can see right now, my gear is the faction PvP gear. Um, but I just wanted to make a video showing that you can tank dungeons as this dex build if you want. Um, I would suggest making sure that you at least know your healer. Uh, this is a pickup group, but I am played a lot with my healer, and we have very good synergy. Uh, we weren't on comms for this run, but we have done this probably around 15 times together, so uh, we don't really need that. Um, but having your healer with some, as someone that you know uh, is pretty important because they'll know when you're going to be taking a lot of damage, um, when to use important cooldowns like Sacred Ground, um, and just overall, they need to know when you're running this build not to be that scared for you, uh, at least as long as your cheat death is active. You're going to see for a lot of time during this run uh, that I get extremely low HP, um, and it looks like it should be scary or um, not really something that you would want to happen as a tank, but when you're tanking with a hatchet, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can get down to zero HP. You know, then after that, you can start playing safe uh, as soon as your cheat death procs. Now, my second weapon I use is Spear. Uh, it's just the, uh, the best dex weapon I could use for tanking other than Hatchet. You know, maybe I could use a bow instead for some extra damage. Um, but seeing as this is Genesis, it's not weak to thrust damage. Uh, it's actually resistant against it. So I wanted to stay away from that this, this run, and I wanted to keep my spear um, as a backup uh, CC. As you can see, mobs like these, these brutes hit really hard. Um, they got me down pretty low, and that's just one of them. There's going to be multiple pulls where you have to um, basically tank like two to three of those at the same time, as well as some other mobs. And uh, without being able to block, your only mitigation really being to dodge um, and your iframes, there really isn't that much uh, option for tanking them. You know, you just kind of kind of kite around them or CC them. And that's where Spear comes in. Um, the AoE sweep's really good for giving yourself a little breathing room, um, getting your stamina regen a little bit. Uh, it's also very good, just single target for if there's a tanky mob that just takes a while to kill. Most of the trash mobs in the game are immune or not immune to CC. Um, and you're able to just kind of chain CC them and make the pull as fast as possible. I mean, the most important aspect of this build is to be focusing on damage, um, just to kind of speed up your dungeon runs and not waste much time farming. Uh, as you can see, as I said, we've run like this maybe 15 times in the past like week and a half. Um, really quick runs. We just advertise for people um, to bring their orbs, and we'll give them a quick run through the dungeon. And it's been working out pretty well. You can tell that some of the other people in this group have run the dungeon as well. Um, you can see them kind of going ahead. Like I think the mage specifically is kind of pulling what he thinks is the next pack to pull, which is good. That's helpful sometimes. Sometimes it can be uh, detrimental to the group, but uh, a lot of times that's just fine to do, help the tank get the pull started. Um, first boss, extremely easy. Straight up tank and spank. Um, I don't think there's any combo he has that can actually kill you. He can get you pretty low though, but if you're standing in a sacred, which you're going to see for most bosses, you just get the hatchet out, spam left click, and stand in sacred, and you're fine. Um, there's really no huge threat here, so it's all just going to be about pumping damage. So this group ended up being a bunch of dex users, which I thought was funny, because I was tanking as dex spec, and we actually have a bunch of DPSs that are running uh, decks as well. It's kind of rare, and most of the time, you know, you get mages and great axes, but this is kind of a special run. Uh, as you can see, the boss is just completely melting. Basically having four DPS, um, healer kind of can also DPS as well, um, because when you have hatchet proc, you know, for your cheat death, you don't really need to worry, or he doesn't need to worry about you as much until it's on cooldown, so... He can even come in for some damage, and uh, that's the fastest way to get done with dungeons, is just have everyone maximize their damage. I 
I'm not really sure on the gear of the people in the group. Um, I assume it's probably decent. The boss went down really fast. A hero just kind of looking at my gear because I thought it was weird that I didn't get any watermark upgrades from that boss. Genesis does seem to be the best dungeon for raising watermark considering there's three bosses and they're all supposed to give you the guaranteed watermark drop uh, upgrade and if you've already upgraded all your armor which most people have because that happens really fast it's really good to get your weapons upgrades here um, and then once you're capped uh, most of the best weapons in my opinion are from Laz uh, but this place is pretty easy and there's a, there's extra bosses uh, lots of mini bosses. There's something like nine mini bosses or something, and they all have pretty uh, good loot tables. So this is very good for watermark farming. It's just, of course, you're limited by orbs, but if you find people through chat that have orbs and you can guarantee them quick runs, you know they're more likely to tell other people. And then next thing you know, everyone's bringing your orbs, and you're just running Genesis back to back for a few hours. As you can see, I got really low there. Didn't even pot or anything because, again, cheat death is available. Uh, just focusing on maximizing damage, and we basically destroyed that pack almost instantly. Fortunately, we're all rooted. It's going to waste a little bit of time, but it's okay. Making good time so far. For this next gauntlet part, uh, I found that it's best to just clear out all the mobs around the sides first um, because the gauntlet can get a little crazy. Uh, you get these archers who jump all over the place and you never know where they're going to take people. People are going to chase them, try to finish them. They're going to pull all the things on the sides of the room. So we just like to always go around first, make sure we grab all those mobs um, because the gauntlet, in my opinion, is probably the hardest part of the dungeon, at least for this build because there's so many mobs. Um, with a standard sword and shield, you'd be able to just tank a lot of that. Just sit there and right-click. Obviously, you'd be doing no damage, so it'd be dying a lot slower, but uh, it is a lot safer. These we probably don't need to clear. They're really squishy. <clears throat> we don't really need to worry about them. They're in the gauntlet. They'll probably just die to incidental AoE. Um, I mean, they do chunk, as you can see. They're hitting me for like 30% in auto. But they're very kiteable and, like I said, low HP. They die pretty fast. So we'll probably ignore those. Here I got stuck on some rocks in my leap. Uh, it was really unfortunate. Uh, you can see I run, make sure I'm within 8 meters of all the mobs before hitting Berserk, which is my AoE taunt. Um, what I want to do here is just get them all their attention on me and then kite them around a little bit. Obviously, I'm not going to stand there. I uh, can't really get many autos off. So for now, it's just kind of keeping them clumped, uh, getting damage in where I can, and mostly just surviving. Because like I said, this is the most difficult part for this build, I think. Got really low there. Still didn't proc though, so can still play a little bit riskier. Play for higher damage. These archers are really annoying. They do really big AoE damage, and uh, they're a pain in the ass to chase around, especially with the hatchet. Uh, so I probably should have switched to spear more for this guy. Okay, yeah, I did. It's good to just lock these down. Don't want to be chasing them all around. You can see how frustrating. Look, he's just jumping himself into the corner of the map. Like, pretty crazy AI on those. This should be the last wave. It's only three elites, I think. The first wave is like five elites or something crazy. 
I feel like they buffed it. I feel like it wasn't always five elites. It was like three or four. Now it's five. But strangely, the waves get a little easier as it goes on. So this is mostly just chasing them around. All right, gauntlet clear. Chests are still bugged. You can only get between 500 to 505 even, I think. I don't even think it goes higher than 505 for loot from chests. So you can't really get great items from there. Um, but, I mean, you still could get some uh, maybe like chunk of adder stone or something to sell for gold. No upgrades, unfortunately. This part of the dungeon, very easy. I mean, after, you, after you're done with the gauntlet, the rest of the dungeon is pretty cakewalk. Um, just a few mobs here and there, no really big packs. You have the boss fights, um, but as you're going to see with really high damage, the boss fights become pretty trivial. Well, at least the second boss, for sure. He uh, just becomes a target dummy. You just stand there and DPS him. Last boss can be a bit trickier. Um, but it's not too dangerous as the, as the tank, as long as you're dodging. These mobs are just giant sponges. You just kill them immediately. You just stand in his full damage. Doesn't even chunk me below half. Um, I'm a sucker for star metal, so I'm never going to pass up that node. Especially if I don't see someone immediately gunning for it. We'll go ahead and scoop that up. Looks like my squad is doing completely fine on their own. <clears throat> they have a single mob pull up ahead. Easily cleared. Coming up to the second boss. Gotta watch out for the ledge boss. I think we lost one there. This pack, we've got two of the little blight mobs and an archer. Archer on the stairs, even more frustrating than just normal archer. A lot of your attacks can miss when you're fighting on the stairs. Alright, so now we're at the second boss. Go ahead and put back on our weapon coatings and our honing stone. Just for some extra damage because we're just going to try to burst this boss down, ignore the mechanics. Um, everyone stay in, pump the boss, ignore all the adds. And you'll see he's going to go straight from phase two into basically a repeat of phase two uh, without any phase in between because our damage is going to be so high. Uh, that's the goal. If that happens, you just get to ignore all the ads and uh, get this fight done with quickly. Voss himself doesn't do too much. Uh, he has like a two swing, one swing, and a three swing combo. He has a ranged attack. He's going to be aiming at your ranged teammates. Um, it's just I don't think it's based on threat or anything. It's just he's going to randomly choose a range about every 10 seconds and throw a claw at them. Doesn't do too much damage. Uh, so here when he runs in the middle, you want to make sure everyone dogpiles in on him. You're going to see a stamina bar appear. You want to break that quickly or else he insta-wipes your entire group. So we broke that fast. Now we're just DPS, and as you can see, he's already at half HP. Uh, there's no way he'd be able to be pushed this far already uh, if I was just a normal sword and, sword and shield tank. Hatchet's getting huge DPS uptime in this fight. That's one of his scary abilities right there when he does that wave. 
um, I believe it's, uh, it does blight and it just chunks. Like that can one shot uh, squishy range characters. So if you're ranged, that's the one thing you pretty much need to watch out for. In this phase right here, he jumps around underground, but you can actually still hit him. So everyone should still be swinging at him while he's underground. Um, as you can see, he comes right out. All the all the ads come in. AOE taunt. They just come and die to AOE. You just get right back on the boss. Um, I'm blighted here because we're standing in the blight. Got to make sure I remove that. One blight pot's all it takes. Really easy. Go ahead and clean up some extra ads. And then just focus the boss. And you should die fairly shortly. Oh, the Genesis caps. Yeah, the mushrooms there. They do give you a damage buff. Uh, so you want to make sure people are close when you're getting that. I mean, it's not something you really need to worry about. Especially when your DPS is already this high. Uh, but just a little added bonus there. And you can see that wave almost one shot a couple people. Here, just face tanking him. Too much damage, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> kind of just stopped moving. So, like I said, this isn't really that kitted of a group, I don't think. Uh, it was mostly a pug and we don't really know what their gear is like and what I do know is that if they're decks they're using rapiers and bows um, it's not like they're using a meta build um, like a fire mage or something like that which would be completely burning this dungeon since it's vulnerable to fire and slashing um, but we're using most of our groups using thrust damage so our DPS was still high enough to just burst right through these little side rooms are pretty much always worth doing. Um, these mini bosses, it may feel like they don't drop loot, but they do. It's just extremely rare. And when they do drop loot, uh, they usually drop like three purples, I'd say. Three purples, a blue, and a couple greens. So their loot tables are it's sparse, but when you get the loot, it's always worth. So you don't really want to skip these rooms. Sometimes people want to skip them. They don't feel like they're worth, but I would definitely say don't skip them. pretty pumped I usually don't get loot from that like I said it's maybe like 1 in 12 1 in 15 I'd say so here this mage uh, he's definitely run the dungeon before he just took it upon himself to be the fire the flame bear torch going ahead and opening all the doors for us that's great you really want someone to be doing that um, that way you can just have the rest of the group clearing the mobs and then you don't have to sit around waiting for the one person to bring the torch walking at RP walk speed across the dungeon. This mini boss is actually kind of insane. Uh, he's a prowler, so he attacks really fast, jumps all over the place. But as long as you're in sacred ground, you're pretty much always safe. That, I mean, that pretty much goes for every tank uh, situation. If you stay in sacred ground, there's really low chance of you dying to anything, um, especially with our build, we want to uh, make sure we're always in sacred ground since we don't really have any real active mitigation. As you can see, I'm getting chunked. I should have been a little bit more careful here um, since I don't have my hatchet out since I am playing with my spear. Probably should have rolled a regen potion. Uh, whenever you do have your spear out, you do need to be a lot more careful uh, because you don't have the cheat death path passive. And, you know, that's your real saving grace with this build, so... It's actually a little sketchy that I would let myself get to 30% with the spear out. But luckily it was okay. Here we have the second mini-boss that's behind a blighted doorway. Like I said, you don't really want to skip these. You should probably always go for them. Um, this one's just your simple shaman. A lot of AoE attacks. Someone's ads dies fast. Spear exceptionally good versus these. <laughs> They're very low threat. And uh, they do a lot of AoEs that can disrupt your DPS. So it's good to just keep them locked down so your damage can just go ahead and tee off on them. A lot of abilities show that they have grit um, and they're actually interruptible. I don't know if, that was, if that's intentional or a bug. But it's something I noticed with those mobs.
usually I like if I'm doing the flame I usually like to open this door that we're about to go to first and then open the door that we just went through that way when you come back you don't need to go back and get the torch again so right now this guy's gonna have to go back and grab the torch like I said it's a pug though it's whatever you know we weren't going for any speed runs or anything so we just figured we might as well pull the rest of the trash here while he goes and grabs the torch I've noticed a few times with this prowler um, he has a habit of just disappearing I don't know what it is, but it's programmed very weird, just disappears. So now since we didn't open this sooner, we have to sit here and wait for the flame bearer. All my homies hate waiting. This guy's doing a nice right angle on his way to the door. About to report him for bot behavior. So the interesting thing about these brutes is if you actually chain CC them right from the pole, they don't get a chance to get their armor off and they die extremely fast. Uh, normally they have an armor that makes them take uh, somewhere around 50% less damage. But if with spear, uh, if you just open on them and just continue chaining your CCs, they're never going to get their armor off and they die really fast. I would only suggest doing that in a situation just like that where you're only fighting one because um, spear is very risky to have out with this build. So when you find opportunities to do something like that, you can take it. But most of the time you want to keep hatch it out. Spear is mainly for a uh, 1v1 situation. So we pulled the archer up top with the javelin. He should be coming down. Yeah, he's there. Clean these up really quickly. Then we have one more pull, and then after this pull is, I think, when you should send the person to go get the torch. Seems we were missing a few DPS here. So the hive dies fairly slowly, but it's it's mostly dead, so I can just go up and grab the other archer. It's actually enabling uh, DPS to go a little bit more ham. They don't have to worry about taking any damage from anything other than the, uh, the little blight mobs while they kill the hive. I just go ahead and CC this guy up. You always want to try to get two light attacks after every CC. That way you can proc your perk um, that reduces your cooldowns on the second string of the light auto. And that way you can just basically always have one up. It's good to pull these just before the boss just to make it way cleaner. You could pull them with the boss at the same time, but at this point you usually have someone going to get the flame. And if there's only four of you, might as well just clear up these mobs quickly and then pull the boss. This is the third or fourth of these mobs in the dungeon. The devs love this mob. They're really proud of it. Not only is it a boss, but it's two mini bosses as well. Great mechanics. This is a cool looking model, but it's definitely a pushover of a mob. Mage went ahead and did all fire, that was nice. Here we have just a couple more pulls to the last boss. Two basically useless chests. It's 
probably better to pull all these mobs together to just grab this run downstairs, but it is ranged. So you never know if LOS is going to work. Sometimes in this game it doesn't work as well as it does in other games. Um, where I would just run up to it, grab some threat, run down the stairs, hide behind a pillar, maybe it would follow. But I'd say 90% of the time they just don't. Maybe it's because of how taunts work in this game or something. Um, just weird aggro. But a lot of times if you taunt a mob and then run really far away, it will kind of just continue attacking what's close to it. Even if that thing isn't building threat. This mob actually hits really hard. You gotta be really careful with this mob. It dies really fast though since our damage is so high. Don't really have to deal with any of its mechanics, but you just wanna watch for the overhead swing it does. At that point, there were so many people killing it, it was already low, I figured I might as well pick up the archer, uh, which is scary. Good thing I switched to my hatchet there. I think that's the first time I procced. Or maybe the second time I procced cheat death that run, but yeah, switching to the hatchet there is really important. Just because whenever uh, you are pulling multiple strong elites um, and uh, you want to get them into a position to clump so your team can DPS and you want to continue DPSing yourself, you're, you're definitely going to start taking a lot of damage. It's not like these mobs don't do damage. It's just that um, it's only some of their big abilities that do the most damage and that are life-threatening. So sometimes you can just tank those um, for the purpose of making them better targets for your DPS. So we're about 25 minutes into the run on the onto the last boss. Fairly quick, definitely not a speed run or anything, but for a pug, uh, I'd say it's great. I've been in pugs uh, where I was DPSing and uh, the dungeon had taken upwards of 40 minutes, sometimes an hour, sometimes more, depending if you wipe on bosses. Um, so 25 minutes of run is great. Uh, it's definitely really enabled by having a fourth DPS and no sword and board tank. So it's just something to keep in mind as an option. It's not really that hard to do. Um, you just have to have some game knowledge of the dungeon that you're entering. I wouldn't go in here for your first time and try to tank it with this spec, but you definitely could. You probably would just die a few times, but as long as you know your healer, you know it's it's good practice. Here, just kind of checking out what loot I got so far. It looks like a bunch of trash, pretty much. No good weapons. No legendaries. Yet. Still have one more chance. Oh, you hate to see that, yeah. So, I threw my javelin too early, um, and one of the DPS thought that I had aggro because he saw me attacking it, but my javelin didn't hit, so I didn't have any snap aggro. Um, and he just got smashed right away. In this fight, basically the same as... Uh, actually, this fight is just a little dan more dangerous than either of the fights in this dungeon. Uh, the overhead smash the boss does is almost a one shot I think it's just not a one shot that I have 11k HP yeah you can see I took one right there in sacred I went down to 3k so maybe if you're outside of sacred it's still a one shot um, but as long as you're in sacred you can probably tank one but you don't really want to uh, especially if you have other damage output coming towards you um, like maybe you get hit by two autos into the slam then you're definitely dead so basically I'm just gonna stand in the sacred spam autos and look to dodge the slam and the uh, Medusa sonic wave sort of attack. Ads come up, they die really fast. They're ex extremely squishy. Something to note, uh, when the boss does that attack, uh, when they're channeling that, if you start iframing at the end of the attack, um, there, there will be a little debuff above your health bar and you can see it, it'll tick down from four seconds when it gets down to like one second, if you just start spam dodging, um, you actually won't drop a puddle, and that'll just save your group some space. It's not a big deal, but it's just something you can do if you're a ranged player. So you can see I'm basically taking a lot of the autos. Uh, her double swing attacks are basically always hitting me, which is okay because I know it won't kill me. Um, I do have cheat up as well, so 
I can kind of just, again, just push as much damage as possible and just dodge that attack to keep my cheat death prolonged. You know, eventually, if it procs, it's fine. Um, but since I don't have to proc it, I might as well just take the time to maybe dodge once or twice, avoid it, just push for damage. The boss is dying extremely fast. She hasn't done the whole room AoE yet, I don't think. I feel like she usually does that by now. But maybe we pushed her a little too fast. Skip some mechanics. Oh, there I was trying to attack, um, but I guess you can't attack during that. Get behind the balls. Should be the only one of those uh, attacks we have to deal with. Since she's already at about 15%. There you can see I didn't dodge out of that slam, and it did proc me, so now I have to play a lot more careful. Uh, you can see I immediately went to pot. Probably going to take a little less time to force damage. Oh, okay, so we do have one more the channel phases. As you can see, this little orb right there almost does no damage. Maybe it does do damage, but it's so insignificant. You can just kind of walk right past them. You see I stood right in those puddles and the health's not really moving. Definitely non-threat. You can kind of just ignore them as long as you're standing in some sort of heal AoE. Looks like two of the DPS died to something. I'm not sure what. But uh, boss is dead. Me and the other DPS were able to finish it up. Now we get to go ahead and check all the chests. And bang. Rewarded with a hammer that I will never use. <laughs> Being a dex build. It's kind of sad that I got it instead of uh, the healer or something, but... It's kind of cool to have. It's the first time I saw a legendary weapon from the dungeon. And here I'm just going to have my specs. You can go ahead and pause if you want to look at them in detail. I don't think it's the best spec per se or anything. It's just the spec that I've been liking the most from both of these. Um, there's probably a couple of talents you could switch around and it wouldn't make much of a difference. But that's just the spec I'm using. And here's my current stats. It's not great. My breaking points are a little off, but that's because of the... Uh, spear and the hatchet that I'm using uh, so yeah I just wanted to go ahead and make some quick footage of this just because people were asking me about it um, what my build was and they didn't believe that dex tanking was a thing so again like I said I just want to reiterate as long as you know your healer your healer knows what to expect um, it's completely fine to dex tank in fact it's probably optimal because you'll be pushing out way more damage than a normal tank would uh, so yeah, if you want to go ahead and try it, feel free. It's pretty fun. And that's the end of this video. All right, thanks for watching.